Hey guys, welcome back to your Fusion 360 wood joint instructional video. My name's Aaron. Today we're going to be having a try at this dovetail joint. Now it's called a dovetail joint it's because the shape of the joint re represents a dove's tail, and that's a bird. Now the opposite end of that dovetail joint, you result in these funny looking pins here, all right? Which can be quite challenging to, to draw. But we're going to do a neat little trick here, and I'm going to teach you something new today and it's going to be called the combined thing the combined uh, feature sorry not thing and i learned this little trick off another fusion 360 evangelist called taylor stein who uh, works for autodesk and is part of the fusion 360 team so guys let's get started open your data panel and ensure you've got your project open and that you're actually inside your folder that you created at the start of these tutorials Close your data panel, we're going to click a new design and straight away I'm going to click save. You're going to call this Dove Tail Joint. Notice I'm using capital letters at the start of each word. Once again guys, um, if, this is your, if you're not part of the Harvester Technology Year 10 program and you're watching in from YouTube and, or from another school, uh, just bear in mind here how I design. I always design in ZUP and define ZUPs in Preferences and ZUP here. The other thing is, guys, before you start, make sure you're logged in using your username and not a not another student, okay? If it, someone else's name is up there, make sure you sign out. Okay, second of all, guys, please ensure that your document units are in millimeters, not inches or meters. Let's get started, guys. So what I want you to do here is create a some parameters straight off the bat, okay? So we're gonna go modify, change parameters. And the first one we're going to click here is this green positive button again, and this is going to be called length. And the length of our timber is going to be 150. We're going to create another one, this will be called width. And the width of our timber will be 42. So dress pine, or dress timber, how you usually buy it if it's kiln dried, uh, once it's dressed from the raw side, through a thickness and everything, it'll be usually 42 by 19. So our thickness here will be 19. All right, the next thing we need to enter here is the pin, and the pin is going to be 10 millimeters. Now we need the angle. Now pay attention how I do this, okay? So in our angle, we've got to click the drop down here and come down to angle and pick up degrees. In degrees, I want you to type 70. Click OK. I'm pretty sure that's about it for now. If there's nothing else, if I've missed something, we can always go back and edit these. So just check, make sure your setup, your parameter setup reflects exactly what I have. Let's get started. Click on a new component. Remember, deselect there, come up to the top, to the parent level, click dovetail, double click in there, and we're gonna call it timber one. So that's your first piece of timber, click okay. We're gonna click a create a sketch. We're gonna click the ground plane. You're going to press R for rectangle, come over to the top and pick center rectangle, snap it to the center, drag out, do not click to terminate, guys. Leave your mouse alone. Type in now, we want to see here the width. This one here, we can tab over now, this will, this will be, um, actually, that will be width, tab over, this will be thickness, sorry guys, my mistake. So, once we do that, enter. E for extrude, type in length, enter, enter, come back in, drag in, and there's our first bit of timber in the upright position. We're gonna click now new component. We're gonna deselect here, and we're gonna click it at a parent level once again. And of course, repetition, timber two, click okay. What I want you to do now is create a sketch and zoom in and click this top window here. R for rectangle, and this will be just a two-point rectangle. You're going to snap it on that corner and drag across. You're going to type in, you can see on my left hand is highlighted at the moment. Oopsie-daisy, I just lost that, but that's okay. I'll get it back. I'll click here with a D for dimension. This one will here be length. I snap up here, drag out, and I can type in width. Okay, so now that we've um, fixed up those dimensions that I accidentally got out of before, you saw how I got back into that, didn't you? Remember your dimension key lives up here, and you can put that, you can click there and add it to your toolbar, or use the shortcut key as D. When you use CAD more, uh, you'll work out it's way faster to use the shortcut buttons, okay, wherever possible, guys. 
Okay, alpha line. So this is a new one here today. So it lives in the sketch line in the shortcut key is L. So watch this, alpha line. And you'll see my mouse has changed now to represent that. I'm zooming in, guys. And the reason I'm zooming in is because I want to pick up that point. Now watch the cursor change when it snaps. See that snap to rectangle? And that's what I want. I want to click there, drag in. Okay, click there, drag up. Now, if, if, if you lose it, that's okay. Just click back on it, come across, come down, and come in. Now, I think I've lost it there again. There we go, and click it. So I've created this weird looking shape dovetail. Let's put some dimensions on that, guys. So D for dimension, click that pin, drag down, click. And you're gonna type in pin. The same on the other side. Click that line, drag down, type in pin. Okay, now watch this trick, guys. Using my D for dimension tool, I'm gonna to click that line first and let go of the mouse, okay? Come up to this line, so let go of the button, click and drag out, type in angle. Same on this side, so click the line once, let go of the mouse, bring it down, click the second line, drag up, type in angle. Okay, remember that trick I taught you in the previous video? We're gonna do a collinear constraint. So collinear constraint, I'm gonna click the button first, I'm gonna click that line and then click that line and boom, it snaps to it. Okay guys, so now I escape out of that and press E for extrude. Now watch this, I'm gonna click this shape and that shape. And this time I'm gonna go, if I would type in thickness, it goes in an upward direction. I'm gonna put a negative in thickness. So it goes down. I'll make sure that it says new body, okay, click OK. Now, when I activate this at a top level and I turn this one off, you can see it's formed and that one there hasn't formed, guys, all right? So this is what you're gonna do now. Don't move your parts, just simply come to modify and go combine. The target body will be this one, the first one we drew. So you're gonna click the target body you come down to the next one, you've got to remember Fusion 360 is intuitive, it's like step-by-step -step process. We come down to the next one, I click tool bodies and I click that. Now, in here, in the operation, make sure it doesn't say join, make sure it says cut. And you want to have this button here selected called keep tool, or keep tools, click OK. Watch this guys when I turn off the light bulb now. Is that friggin' cool or what? But just remember, look at this, I can still pull it away. I can undo that, or I can pull this one away. So I'm gonna put a, a as-built joint in this, guys. So as-built joint, continue, one, two, okay. Let's put some rendering on that, guys. Just an appearance, actually. It's not actually true rendering, because if you wanted to really truly render, guys, you'd come up in here and go into render. But we're gonna put a, I don't know, glossy pine here. Oak semi-gloss there for me. I like that. And I need to save my work. There we have it, guys. It's friggin' cool, isn't it? I hope you're enjoying this Fusion 360. And just remember, guys, it's free to download, okay? Um, if you're a student or a hobbyist, Fusion 360 is free to you. There's not many CAD systems out there that offer that. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you back on the next video. See you later.